Jordan Ellis here for Talk Sport MMA. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Arnold Allen ahead of his fight at UFC 304. How's it going, mate? Yeah, not bad, mate. I'm just, I'm just out of bed. <laughs> out of bed at this time? What, what's been going on? Is this camp taking it out of you? No, I no, just uh, I got home from a boxing session about 4.30 in bed at 5. So, yeah, yeah, I thought I'd sleep in. I ain't got nothing on today, so just talk, staying in bed. Talk to me about this stage of camp. I think we're, we're like, like just over a week out from the fight yeah how are you feeling how is, are you tapering down right now yeah feeling good uh taping i had one more last last sparrings yesterday uh we're good everything's going good energy's good even though the weight's coming down and all that so yeah we're in a good place we're in a good place and is there anything new for camp you're doing there you just mentioned about you know um the, the start time in terms of the way you're training is that specifically to deal with the start time of this fight card yeah, just um, making adjustments for that, the stupid sleep schedule thing they're making us do. Uh, I'm fighting about 3 a.m., so I've been staying up to about 4, 4.30. So, yeah, that's annoying, but it is what it is. How, how has that been, you know, when you're in the gym at, at them times of the morning so you're thinking, and I should have got into another career, or is it just another day at the office type thing? Yeah, just another day at the office. Uh, the first couple of weeks, it was a bit shit, but... Um, I'm glad. I, I'm glad I started it like far out, you know, prepped in a long way. Because right now, weirdly, about seven p.m. I feel proper sleepy, and then three in the morning I'm wide awake. So that's a bit strange. <laughs> Before we get into into that next fight, you you've got coming up. I just want to talk to you about the last one. Obviously, it was a loss. It, it didn't go your way, and you've had you know a bit of time to reflect on it now. So when you're looking back at that performance, what what do you make of it? Yeah, it's crap. <laughs> it's crap. Uh, all situations, you know, the knees, the decision, everything. Like, it's all crap. But whatever. Onwards and upwards, fix it, get better. Yeah, and not to focus on the negative, but that is, you know, it, it's your first, you know, back to back losses in your career. Mm. How did you deal with that at the time? And how does that affect you going into the next fight camp? Uh, I didn't deal with nothing, to be honest. It's. I, it ain't really a problem because I, I still, in my head, I feel like I won. Um, got stiffed on the knees situation. It is what it is. Obviously, I still got a contender's mentality and I could go back and improve things. But, yeah, I'm not uh, – I didn't lose sleep over it, you know what I mean? I, I feel my skills are up there with the best in the world. Sometimes these things happen and it is what it is. So, yeah. Yeah, it's also just a part of being one of the best in the world that you come up against guys like that who who keep it close. And even if you don't see like the judges are going to go your way, it's yeah. about being competitive. And you obviously was. So with that in mind, you said you didn't lose sleep. It it didn't particularly bother you. So does it kind of just business as usual in terms of the camp? Do you make any changes off the back of them two losses? Yeah, not not because of those two losses, just because it's a different fight, you know. I and I'm not changing my team. I'm not shipping people out. I'm not, you know, it's. I know you could say it's broke, but it's not. It's not broke. It's just the sport. You know, I came up against Max Holloway, who's sort of reinvented himself, and we expected a different version. And then I had a great camp at TriStar in the last one, and yeah, like I said, I felt like I should have probably got the nod. Yeah, and what, what, just while we're on Max Holloway, what did you make of his win at UFC 300? I know it's been a while now, but you were trading up with them at the end of your fight as well, and, and it didn't go as well for Justin Gaethje. So what did you make of that? Yeah, yeah great fight. Like he, he looked like uh, he took the style we got from the camp he did for me and then took it to a next level, you know. that The things, little things he's doing, little intricacies and little traps he's setting, he, he's took that up a whole level. So fair play to him. Yeah, he's an absolute beast. And I'm moving on to the yeah. card that's coming up, obviously. As a Brit, and all Brit fans, I'm sure, are very excited about this one. Um, how do you feel about fighting in Manchester? It has been London. Um, f I think it's about eight years since the last card in Manchester. How do you feel yeah. about it? Yeah, it's nice. It's, uh, you know, I love fighting in the UK, and it's nice to go different areas, different places. You know, I fought in Liverpool for the UFC, and that was that was a great event. So it's going to be real fun to fight in Manchester. Uh O2 in London is nice because it's close to the home. The drive back after is a bit easier, but nah, it's going to be nice. New arena, different crowd. You know, that's exciting. And the start time, we touched on it just before. Um, in terms of the UFC, have they explained like why 
it's happening at this time if they you know give you expl- explanation or just said you know this is what it is deal with it no they didn't even say this is what it is they just put yeah some fan released it saying it was that and i was like oh shit you know so it is what it is talk to you about the opponent uh, G- uh, gd chikaza um obviously very good fighter what do you make of him i'm sure you've been doing a lot of study a lot of a lot of working on a game plan for him what do you make of him as an opponent yeah, he's, he's a world-class kickboxer. Everyone who has watched him knows what he's good at. Uh, he's exciting. You know, he's going to bring out the best of both of us, I think. We're both going to have a... You know, both, we're both two good strikers. He's always sort of pushing to fight other strikers, and I'm sure that's why him and his management have always pushed to fight someone like me. You know, they, they've never pushed to fight someone like Mosvar, so there's a reason for that. And... Uh, I kind of more often oblige that style. So, yeah, it's going to be a fun fight. Absolutely. Could be fight of the night. And was you happy with that match? Because obviously when you are at six in the rankings, the goal is always to be fighting someone in top five and working his way towards that belt. So he's number 10. You're fighting down the ranks. It was obviously, I'm guessing this wouldn't be your first choice opponent right now. Based on rankings, yeah. Just purely rankings. Always, like you say, always want to look up but, I mean, they made me fight down the rankings of the last fight, even after going to a decision with Max Holloway. So, yeah, I, don't, I think these guys have the same managers and they get the same sort of, uh, you know, luxury treatment. They sort of get what they ask for. So, that's unfortunately the game. Yeah, and I guess you've just got to kind of go in and, and secure your spot. Um, so, in terms of the fight, it sounds like, you're intending to, you know, strike with them. Are you confident, you know, can outstrike them? Or is this, a, you know, obviously it is a mixed martial arts bout. Do you think it could go to the floor as well? I, you know, I'm I'm, I'm confident in my striking. I, you know, I train with some top professional boxers, top kickboxers, top everything. So for years since I got into the sport, I got into the sport as a striker. And that's everyone knows how I fight. That's how I fight. So, yeah. And in terms of sparring partners, this one, have you been working with? Is there anyone specific in terms of mimicking his style? Yeah, so I was up at Renegade for the first part of the camp, working with a lot of guys out there. Uh, too many to name, you know, there's too many guys out there. Then uh, I finished this last part of the camp local at BKK Fighters. And uh, yeah, really good guys, some really talented guys. Uh, Mitchell Forbes has been coming in to help me. He's He fights on uh, karate combat, really Guy's so fast, man. He's so fast, but uh, getting a lot of work in with him, so that's been good. And when you're, you know, daydreaming about this fight, how do you envision it playing out? How do you get your hand raised in this one? Yeah, just outworking him on the feet, just landing more shots. That's it. And um, going to the main event, you just mentioned you was in Renegade. Uh, Leon Edwards is headlining this card against Bilal Muhammad. Just as a, as a fan looking at that one, how do you expect that to play out? Uh. I think Leon's going to control the distance, pick him apart. Uh, he's he's something weird when you stand in front of him. His fakes, his his setups, his traps, sort of mesmerizes people. And you see people like Colby stood there, sort of stunned. Having sparred with him, you you, you understand it. And having seen him do that other to high level guys, you get more of an understanding of what he's doing. You know, he's setting traps and baiting. There's a reason people sort of stand in front of him, frozen. You know, it's not. It's not because they're they're not acting or doing it. It's, he's setting little fakes and traps and making you think, overthink. And is that what makes him a world champion? Do you think you know just them little to make the opponents hesitate? Is there anything you see when you're standing across from him and think you know if I can work this into my game, that's probably the inch I need to to take me from a, a top ten to a you know title winner. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't feel I could do the things he does. To be honest, he's uh yeah, he's very high skilled in what he does. Uh, I don't think it suits me. <laughs> and talk to me about Tom Asmel. He is the co-main event of this card. Have you had any chance to train with him over the years? And and if so, what was that like? No, he's too big, man. <laughs> that that heavyweight super camp they've got, they've got going on is it, yeah. epic. What what do you make of the actual fight? He's got Kurt Blades, another rematch, obviously. Um, ended in unfortunate circumstances, likely on Edwards, Bilal Muhammad won. Yeah, it's a good fight. Um... I, yeah, I don't know. I, obviously, I favour Tom, but um, Curtis plays very good, very good. So it'd be interesting to see how it plays out. I, yeah, I definitely favour Tom, especially on the on the run he's on. But um, 
Yes, it is an interesting matchup. Heavyweight's always harder to call. Yeah, you can just sit back and, and enjoy that one as a fan. Um, mm. All going well for you. This puts you in a, a, a decent position in terms of if you secure that spot. You have mm. to go the long way round to work towards that Max Holloway fight the last time. Do you feel like you've got to put another run like that together? Or do you think you've earned your stripes and it should just be a couple more and then you are back in, in talks for the title shot? Yeah, I think it should be a couple more and we're back in, you know. So, yeah, yeah, I've done the long way and I'm still hanging around the spot now and they try to screw me or give me nines and tens and elevens or whatever. But, yeah, yeah, I feel like I've I feel like I've earned the right to be in that talk, you know. All you can do is take them out and then it, it, it kind of pushes you towards the champ who is Ilya Tapore right now. Yeah. Uh, what do you make of him as a potential opponent, Dan Alain? Yeah, he's very good. Very good everywhere. Heavy hands, dangerous. Still a lot of questions, obviously. People people got things we want to see, but um, yeah, he's very good. Dangerous guy. And the big question is, Max Holloway, it seems like that, that is going to happen later this year. Mm. And as you said, Holloway's kind of reinvented himself. He seems to have got like a second wind in his career and he's coming again. Um, do you think he can take that title back? Yeah, I, I think he can. I think Holloway can beat anyone. You know, he had some really good... I thought he had a couple of not... Or at least one fight against uh, Volk, and then Volk sort of turned up and levelled up on him. But yeah, I, I think uh, Holloway can beat anyone on his day. And, and you mentioned Volk there. Do you think he's done in terms of being a, a top title contender now? You know, back to that KO losses. That is tough, but it's also, as we said earlier, it's part of the game. You know, when you go in with people like Makachev and Topuria, it happens sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I don't, I don't see him being the champ again. Unfortunately, you know, he, he had such a great run, put a lot of work in, and uh, I just, yeah, it must be tough to be in that position. I, I don't know if he can get back to it. Uh, just finally, before you let you go, the the featherweights. I've had some brilliant champions over the years, and and a lot of time people stop, like they really struggle to split them. Do you have a ranking in terms of Volkanovski, Aldo, Holloway, McGregor? Um. For me, Aldo was like one of the guys that I first watched getting into the sport. He's he's you know always cemented as a featherweight goat for me. But uh, you know the things Volkanovski done is like next level. You know he the the schedule he kept, the how he pushed it, and how he kept competing, going up a weight, and looking good. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Aldo's Aldo's the goat for me. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thanks for your time today, Arnold. Wish you good luck with the rest of the camp. And fight nights, I'll be there rooting you on. So, um, yeah, good luck. Can't wait to see you. Cheers, mate.